2014, a trying year for many. It's very hard to see someone that you love so much slip away every day. I'm fully and truly convinced that track saved my life. But people answered the call in their hearts to do something and make a difference. Everything from volunteering in another country to helping out a school right down the street. He comes in and he just brightens the day. Everyday people stepping up to become extraordinary heroes. She's just made a world of difference in his life. LEX 18 is proud to share some of those inspiring stories with you this Christmas Day as we celebrate those who are making a difference. Hello everyone and Merry Christmas. I'm Nancy Cox. Remember that old song from the 80s, Do They Know It's Christmas? Well, while we're celebrating with friends and family and kids are playing with their new toys, we need to remember not everyone is so fortunate. For instance, it's been more than four years since Haiti was devastated by an earthquake. Since then, hundreds of groups from all over the world and right here in Kentucky have traveled there to help with the recovery. That includes a mission team from Midway Baptist Church. LEX 18 assignment editor Mike Taylor documented their trip and found that making a difference means more than building homes. It's about building what this church calls a love-Haiti relationship. Why did I come to Haiti? God led me to Haiti. I was really led here. It wasn't a. It wasn't really a personal decision. It was um, something that was kind of in the back of my mind, and I really I felt God, you know, tugging at the heartstrings. I came to Haiti to make a difference. I've been to a lot of different impoverished countries. Honestly, nothing really compares to the pervasive spread of of the poverty here. This is Lambie Village, and this big, big tree that you're seeing here is um, almost like the uh, town center. It's the best shade in town. Off to the right, there are still uh, about a dozen families still living in the same kind of tents that we saw so many pictures of from the, uh, from the earthquake. Lambie Village is a village that is made up of residents that have been um, affected by the earthquake. A lot of them have been living under tarps for over four years. We've taken these families and we've empowered them with providing them with a permanent stable home, um, with education, with job empowerment. So we're not just giving you the house, but you are earning the house by your sweat equity. This is not um, a handout but it's more of a hand up. Look at it, it's, it makes it look easy. But that's like concrete. This is my chance to do a mission trip and make some changes. I've been painting on some very rickety, uh, safety questionable ladders. <laughs> oh yeah, girl. Uh, the strength of the children in our group has been really amazing. Uh, all of the kids, and I mean all of them, boys and girls, have worked very hard and have really put themselves out there. Tell me what you've done while you've been here. Mostly build trusses. They're like wooden triangle frames that they use for holding up the roofs of houses. Not much you can do if you're a slacker here, except change from being a slacker to being not a slacker. You see everyone around here, kids, adults, working together uh, with a happy face on, always happy to see us, and uh, they, they haven't let it get them down. <laughs> it's just so destitute. There's, there's no infrastructure. Uh, people are just on the streets, just basically trying to live, and, and yet they have so much hope and they're so happy. Well, this little guy is Bebe, say hello. <laughs> and he... <laughs> And Bebe stole my heart. I'm really surprised by how strong they are in faith. It's very inspiring and I hope I can take that back. You know, you come to build houses and you end up making these new friends from a, a place you've never been before. It's, it's really cool. I've heard a lot of people talk here about how awful it is. I have yet to meet a person who lives here who seems miserable. They're gracious, they're thankful, they're considerate, and they're joyous all the time. Many, many. 
with me now is the Haiti team leader, Ron Wyatt. And Ron, I understand you have a progress report since you guys left Haiti. Yes, when we left Haiti, the uh, well was broken. Mm -hmm. Since then, we had some extra money, so we were able to fix the well and install a water tank. So now there's uh, clean water back again in the village, and it's a good thing. What a gift. And how does that make you feel inside in this holiday season to know that you've impacted lives? It's a, it's a great feeling to know uh, that we were able to help and just uh, it's a great feeling. And folks are going back, right? Going back in June, uh, hopefully to, to uh, continue our work there in, in another place, but a very similar project. Welcome back. Well, not everyone can travel halfway around the world to make a difference, but in ways large and small, we can all touch another life. LEX 18's Haley Harmon is getting acquainted with the people of Central Kentucky and telling some of their special stories. Yeah, that's right, Nancy. And it's really been such a pleasure this year to get to tell those making a different stories each and every week on LEX 18 News. One of the ones I know that was really, really special that we got to tell this year was about a Lexington man who's using his retirement to change the lives of kids all across the area. For more than a year, Gene Bills has been volunteering every week at Lexington's Yates Elementary School. And to thank him for all that hard work, the school actually surprised him with a big award. <laughs> when, he, when you come in the cafeteria, it's really bright, and it's not because of the lighting, it's because of Mr. Bills. Gene Bills isn't your typical 76-year-old. Come on, young fella. In fact, he's about as young at heart as you can get. You like ketchup and eggs, too? Good, good. So maybe that's why when he entered retirement recently, he found it didn't suit him so well. He knew it was time to give back. What do you need? Fork? He's been volunteering here in the cafeteria at Yates Elementary for more than a year now, and the kids love him. Can you count to 20? Principal Twanya Jones says they can't wait to see him every day. They just absolutely love Mr. Bills. For the longest I didn't know his first name was Gene because all I knew was Mr. Bills. For all his hard work, the school surprised Mr. Bills with its first ever Volunteer of the Month award. With hundreds of his beloved students presenting him with heartfelt thank you cards. Uh, it's wonderful, wonderful. All to recognize how he gives of his time to help the youngest in his community. I think helping a child is a real, a real treat. A major thank you to a man who is truly making a difference. This gave him an opportunity to see that we see what he does, we appreciate all that he does, and we couldn't do it without him. Well, another story that really touched us this year, a fourth grader out of Boyle County who showed she was wise beyond her years. For her birthday this year, she said she didn't want any gifts. Instead, she was searching for a cure for Alzheimer's disease. Peyton Garant is in fourth grade at Boyle County's Woodlawn Elementary, and at just 10 years old, she's already determined to give back. The reason why? Her beloved teacher, Ms. Krista DeWolf. DeWolf's mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's a few years ago. It was very eye-opening, very heartbreaking. Um, it's very hard to see someone that you love so much slip away every day. After participating in the yearly Alzheimer's race that DeWolf created to raise money for Alzheimer's research, Peyton decided she wanted to do more. I didn't want presents for my birthday and I wanted to raise money for her mom for Alzheimer's. I got tears in my eyes. I, I, it was just very touching. So for the last several weeks, Peyton's been raising money. She has now raised well past $700 for the Alzheimer's Association, hoping to make a difference for everyone battling the debilitating disease. What do you hope that it does? It gets a cure and she can have the medicine as soon as possible. But especially for the teacher she loves so much. I hope that her mom can remember her when they have a cure for it. My mom would tell you that you could do anything if you put your mind to it. I think that's what she would tell Peyton. Welcome back to Making a Difference. Now, if you're a fan of the movie The Blind Side, you're going to like this next story. It's about a young man who had every reason to go down the wrong path, but he chose the right one. LEX 18's Kyle Scott is here to tell his story. Yeah, we all have the ability to help others, and sometimes we don't even realize its impact. For Woodford County's Walter Kinder, a stranger's decision to help him change the course of Walter's life.
I'm fully and truly convinced that track saved my life. Life is made up of moments. Each moment includes choices. 19-year-old Walter Kinder has had his fair share of moments, the earliest of which provided him with no choice. I think I was in about seven or eight elementary schools just in kindergarten. Then as a third grader, I got pulled out of class one day, told me my mom had went to jail. Uh, they needed to figure out what they were going to do with me. Because at, at the time, my dad was also incarcerated. So Walter moved in with his grandparents, which was a good thing. They were his role models. But a couple years later, his grandfather passed away. We're just going to say once he died, my life kind of went downhill. It was back to his old lifestyle, moving from place to place with his mother. Then in his eighth grade year, he met the Woodford County Middle School track and field coach, Jim Jarman. I'm not a teacher, but I went to lunch with my daughter one day and she said, why are you here? I said, well, I want to have lunch with you, but I'm on a recruiting mission. And so I was looking around the lunchroom and I hear this commotion. So I walked over and I said, stand up, young man. And so Walter stood up and I immediately knew I had a shot put thrower on my hands. From that point, I was interested. It's just the situation going on in my life, I never really could get there. So I had other priorities, things to be able to survive properly going on. Jarman didn't know that. In fact, very few knew that. But Jarman got his first glimpse of what Walter's life was really like following the team's first meet of Walter's eighth grade year. We got home. I'm going to guess around 12, 1230 in the evening. And here's Walter sitting over here on a concrete bench without a ride home. That was a recurring theme for Walter until his freshman year. One evening in December, it was cold and it was snowy. It was about 10 or 1030. And Walter called and said, I'm cold. I'm walking around. I said, I'm coming to get you. And what I noticed was that he was wearing tennis shoes and a hoodie and a short sleeve shirt on and jeans. No hat, no gloves, and it was less than 15 degrees outside. The next day, Jarman contacted the Woodford County High School social worker, who in turn contacted Walter's uncle, John Pitts. Somebody either had to take him or they were going to send him off. When they said he had to have some uh, stable home, I went and got a place and brought him home with me. For the next three years, Walter had two homes, one with his uncle, the other with the track team, both of which have taken Walter from the uncertainty of life on the streets to the University of the Cumberlands, where he'll pursue his college degree and continue his athletic career, something that may have never happened without Jim Jarman. I was an honor to have been a part of it all, and, uh, and I have a lifelong friend I consider him as family more so than I do a friend. Can't really thank him enough for what he's done. LEX 18 has enjoyed bringing you this special Making a Difference. We leave you tonight with a look at some of the other people who inspired us and a challenge. Do your part in your community. Make a difference and make it better. Merry Christmas. It's time to make you know what? Stop thinking about it and just do something. It's time to go the distance. It makes me feel really good when I can see some of my patients are trying to get their life back on track. It's time to help a I'm helping other people. Don't yeah. be greedy, get to the needy. It's time to build the future. It's like a part for everybody. It's time to take a step. We all decided as a group that we wanted to show support. Instead of the children always thinking about wanting, that real joy comes from giving. We're not building community, um, we're nourishing the community that's here. Let's go, let's see what happens. I'm, I'm excited. I'm paying for your groceries today. Oh yeah. Yes ma'am. Thank you for what you do. Stop the healing, stop the blindness. You